What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com where I teach you how to overcome chronic back pain by mastering your mindset, improving your movements, and building strength. Today I wanna to talk about your hip hinge technique and give you three quick fixes that you can do right now to improve your pain experience with the hip hinge. If you bend over, if you're bending to lift kids or mulch bags or laundry baskets or whatever you're bending over to grab, or if you're in the gym and every time you do a deadlift or every time you bend over to grab a weight or your gym bag, something catches, something hurts, pain is ignited, we're gonna beat that. I'm gonna give you three ways you can do that just by a simple hip hinge technique improvement. Check this out. Don't forget, if you currently have chronic low back pain, you're trying to navigate exercise, whether you've had some kind of um, spinal surgery and you're trying to navigate exercise after surgery, or you've just had long-standing chronic back pain and you know you should exercise, but you're scared to death to do it, I have a workshop that you can check out. It's absolutely free. I'll add the description here below. You're just gonna pop up on the bottom of the screen. Click on that, let me know where you want me to send it. I'm gonna give you direct access and it's yours forever. I break down the exact ways that I structure workouts, structure my own workouts, even if I've beaten chronic back pain after rupturing my disc and not having it fixed, as well as clients that I'm working with now. I follow the same template when it comes to organizing, putting everything together so that they can have the best success possible and also leave room for modification to fit them specifically. I give that to you absolutely free. Link is below, it's also in the description. So let's break down the first point of hip hinge technique. And when it comes to chronic low back pain, a big thing that I don't see a lot of people doing correctly is engaging the lats. When they're trying to navigate chronic pain with the hip hinge, oftentimes they're just not incorporating everything that they should be. Now what you'll see is if I'm actually working on hip hinge practice, right? I'm not exercising, I'm not lifting weight, I'm just engage I'm trying to learn how to navigate the pain I'm experiencing with the hip hinge. What you wanna do is focus on how you're engaging your lats. So if you're doing a hip hinge practice on your knees, if you're doing it standing up, if you're doing it with weight, you have to engage the lats and that's gonna activate that posterior chain the way you want it to. Instead of all the force going into your lower back, what you're doing is you're engaging everything and allowing it to work. So how do you do this? What I suggest you do is if you're practicing the hip hinge and you're in a standing, sitting, whatever position you're in, is think about taking your arms and bringing them back. So you're as if you were holding onto a bar and you're pulling it into your hips. What this is doing is you're engaging your, and you're kind of brain training yourself to activate these big muscles right here. So if I'm just practicing with myself just standing here. I'm gonna bring my arms in. I'm almost as if I'm trying to push them back. I'm gonna engage my lat and then I'm gonna lead with my hips because it is a hip hinge. So tip number one, engage your lats more. Don't just kind of grab the bar. Don't just kind of sit here and like, okay, oh that hurts, I can't do that. Think about what you're doing. Engage the lats, slow down, relax the lower back and I'm gonna hinge with the lats engaged. Now apply that to everything you're doing. If you're in the gym, if you're grabbing something, like you're out in the yard, you're spreading mulch, or you're picking your lawn mower up and throwing it in the back of your truck, whatever you're doing, if you're doing that before you lift, before you actually take the load on, engage the lats and see how much of a difference you see. So the second tip is all about fine tuning the pain point, all right? So you're in the hip hinge, you're bending over, you have a certain place where you're like, ooh, I can't, I can't go past that spot right there. You're gonna fine tune what's going on at that specific place. Now there's three ways that I personally like to fine tune that specific painful area. It's ways that I've used for myself. It's ways that I've used for clients who are trying to navigate or get over some severe sensitivity. The first technique I use is addressing having too much of a brace, right? Point number one, tip number one was engaging the lats. Oftentimes we try to think or we, we tend to default on more tension, harder bracing will protect the spine. When in reality, if you do have some major sensitivities, you've been fused, you've had some kind of spinal surgery, that is not the case. In fact, too much tension could be adding more compression to the sensitive area, 
causing you pain. So address how much tension you're creating. Is it too much? Which leads me to the second point is, do you have enough tension going on? So there's something that you control and there's more of a subconscious muscle contraction going on when we move, right? That's the way God created your body. It is, there's a lot of things that happen without you thinking. So when it comes to bending over, if I'm going to lift something heavy, versus me lifting up my toothbrush, there's a sense of brace tuning that you have to kind of consider when you're navigating a sensitive spine. So if you have too little of a brace, you could just be kind of bending over carelessly, right? If you do have a sensitivity, you have to think about, okay, I am sensitive, I'm kind of intolerant to bending in this position, so I have to kind of keep that in mind so I can't just bend carelessly and just kind of throw ambition to the wind when it comes to core bracing. So you have to maybe add in some sort of brace. And the way I suggest people do this is a quick breath out is enough to engage the trunk from a 360 degree angle, okay? So what I'll do is I'll get set, quick breath out. That's enough to just engage everything. Once everything is engaged, that's when you can tune how hard or how soft you're actually bracing around the spine. Now, the third one is all about overall tension, right? You are scared. You are fearful. You worry. Your anxiety is higher when you have a sensitivity, especially when it comes to low back pain because you use your back all the time. So what happens is, is not only are we navigating how hard or how soft our trunk is when we are bending, but we have to look at the rest of the body. How tense are you? How much are you trying to protect the area that you're bending? So when you're thinking about overall body tension, you have to learn to relax everything while you focus on certain parts of the trunk being activated and being relaxed. So this is my cueing technique that I try to use. When I'm going into my hip hinge, right? I'm trying to work on my technique here. I'm going to relax my body. First, get everything in a nice, comfortable, relaxed place. Once I'm there, quick breath out, I'm there braced. I'll kind of fine tune that trunk to see how hard or how soft I wanna actually hold that position. Then I'm gonna relax my lower back, relax it. I'm not tensing it. I'm not trying to contract it to protect it. I'm not trying to overextend. I'm not trying to add some weird flexion. I'm just gonna relax the lower back going into hip hinge. That's something that's not really coached because you're talking about very subtle differences and changes in how you're approaching the hip hinge. And this is massive. This is a massive, massive technique that you can play with, with bracing the trunk, engaging the lat, and allowing those deep, deep lower back muscles to activate on their own without you having to overcompensate or overcreate tension that doesn't need to be done. So my third and final point for this video is starting small, right? Oftentimes you go straight to the PVC. If you've ever YouTubed hip hinge technique, hip hinge for low back pain, hip hinging with back pain, whatever you wanna search when it comes to how to bend over properly with back pain, you see people break out the PVC pipe, right? They're kind of putting it on their head. I have one here. You see these videos here where you're like, yeah, you get this thing, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you do, which is a great tool. It's actually a really, really good tool. But we skip over the importance of starting in a place where you can control and you don't feel scared to practice. And this, I always suggest people starting on their knees and hip hinging back to their butt. Okay, it's a very simple, gentle way of approaching the hip hinge that is not dangerous. It's very controllable and you can work on the lat engagement, the bracing. You can do that from your knees. Then you work up from a standing position, right? And you start doing things like what I call the short stop position. Uh, Stuart McGill uses this in one of his books, uh, Back Mechanic, is he talks about the short stop in baseball position and how you can gently get yourself into a comfortable, safe hip hinge position while you're learning to navigate and tune braces and breathing and, and trying to incorporate all the things you should be incorporating, that's a great next step. From there, you can go into without any kind of shortstop position, without any kind of ha uh, hand assistance down your thighs. You can just do it by shifting your weight back and adjusting from there. The next step would be loading it, right? Adding a bar to it, add some dumbbells, add a hex bar, whatever you may have to increase the tension, increase the load on this sensitive movement to see where you might have to dial in because ultimately you have to build resilience in the lower back. It's not about taking out 
hip hinging or taping, taking out flexion, but you have to learn to navigate it. And once you can find a comfortable entry point, you start to increase the difficulty so you can build resilience in those tissues, right? And we do that by strength training. We do that by exercising and adding load to those joints and the, and the tissues in that area so they can get stronger and be more confident because it's a mechanical thing and a mental thing. You have to trust yourself and trust that your lower back will get stronger. It will feel better despite your surgery despite your history, you will get better. And once you believe that, that's gonna unlock a lot of pain-free movements for you that used to actually cause a lot of pain. So question for you, when do you experience the most pain? Can you do it on your knees when it comes to hip hinging back onto your heels? Can you do it with the shortstop position and hip hinging? What aspect or what part or what, what point in your hip hinge, you bending over, do you feel the pain come on? Is it early? Is it late? Is it with weight? Is it without weight? Let me know in the comment section below your experience with the hip hinge and chronic back pain. That's it. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe and the bell notification to let you know every time a new video is put out. And again, if you have not picked it up yet, in the description is that free workshop to show you how to exercise and navigate exercise with chronic back pain. It's absolutely free. It's a video you can watch right now. See you on the next episode.